What is going on guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Stephanie Buttermore and today we are going to be touching on a topic that might have crossed your mind at some point in your life, especially if you are interested in fitness and improving your physique. You may look at others thinking, oh, well, they just have good genetics. Ugh, they can eat whatever they want and not get fat because of their genetics. Or on the flip side, you may think, ugh, people who are overweight are just lazy and not because it has something to do with their genetics. So which is it? Does your DNA make you fat or are people just lazy? Well, first things first, there is something that we do know, and that is your diet plays a huge role in how fat you are. There is no escaping the fact that the more you eat, the fatter you will be. So with that aside, how much are your genetics contributing to your physique? And to be honest, even before all of our advanced genomic-wide studies, we had a pretty good idea that genetics played a big role in our physique because of twin studies, where researchers would report that even twins separated at birth likely had similar body composition. And if one twin was reported to be overweight, it was extremely likely that the other twin was also overweight. Okay, got it. It's because of your genes. But what exactly in your DNA is causing this? Well, in 2007, we kind of figured it out. So you may or may not have heard, but they found a fat gene. Well, actually it's called the fat mass and obesity susceptibility gene, otherwise known as the FTO gene. And a variant of this gene was associated with a higher BMI. Now, some people have no copies of the gene, some people have one copy of the gene, and some people have two. And the people who have two have a higher risk of obesity. And since the discovery of this gene, scientists have been trying to figure out how it works. Some researchers think it has to do with energy expenditure, some think it has to do with appetite, and some think it has to do with both. So to figure out if having two copies of the fat gene makes you eat more, they did a study in children where they fed them cookies. And they found that on average, the kids with two fat genes ate about 10 grams more cookie than the kids with no fat genes. Now it doesn't seem like a lot, that's approximately just one Oreo, but it does go to show that appetite or even ghrelin regulated in your brain might be different if you have the fat gene. But with all of the accumulating research and studies done on people with two copies of this gene, these people on average only weigh about three kilograms more than those who have no copies. And for my American viewers, that's only about seven pounds. So this gene obviously isn't telling the whole story. And that becomes very clear with fancy genomic studies that has now identified over 70 75 obesity susceptibility genes. They haven't made as much of a ruckus as the FTO gene because they may not have as much of an effect or as clear of an association, but a combination of many obesity susceptibility genes could be explaining the rest of the genetic predisposition for higher body fatness. And in an evolutionary perspective, it makes sense to have genes to select for higher body fat. Our ancestors that had the ability to store fat when food was scarce probably outlived others in times of famine and then pass down these genes. And all of that puts up a big red flag for genes being the culprit to being overweight. But it doesn't add up when you think about how the prevalence of obesity is increasing worldwide more recently, particularly in the US. And humans have probably always had this gene. We've only just discovered it, but phylogenetic studies have confirmed that it is actually a very well-conserved gene that has been with us for a long time. So why are we getting fat now? So if our genes haven't changed, one thing is certain is that our environment has drastically changed. And scientists believe that if you have two copies of the fat gene, an environment with an overabundance of food is really gonna work against you. So the genes that once saved us during times of famine are now probably making the population obese, especially in places that have very calorically dense food in every direction that you look. So yes, we know that our genes are working against us in the modern world, but the research also shows that we can fight this even if we have the fat gene. So not all hope is lost if you have two copies of this gene. And this is evident when looking at all the studies analyzing environmental and lifestyle factors. Six out of seven studies concluded that diet and physical activity can mitigate the effects of the fat gene. And a, tw and a 2018 study investigating the mechanism of the fat gene stated that 
Although the impact of the FTO on energy expenditure is uncertain, it has been well established that physical activity levels can ameliorate the detrimental impact on BMI, which gives us hope that even if we do have this gene, if we keep our lifestyle, physical activity, and most importantly, nutrition in check, you should still be able to achieve your weight loss or body composition goals with the right diet and training program. Another question you may be wondering is, if I have the fat gene, is it harder for me to lose weight? And that question was answered in a 2016 study that compared those with the fat gene to those who didn't. And this study concluded that those with the FTO gene responded equally well to weight loss treatment. So good news is, even if you have the gene, you shouldn't have any harder of a time losing weight than someone who doesn't. And that doesn't take away from the fact that some people do have an easier time with weight loss than others. It just shows that the fat gene isn't going to be the reason reason for that difference. So to kind of wrap this all up, do our genetics make us fat? Well, sorta. Yes, it is just one contributor of the many things like the amount of time you spend sitting, your level of physical activity, your diet, and if you watched my last women's series video, you know it could be even your birth control. So my words to the wise are that your genetics do not control your fate, and it is ultimately within your control to follow a nutrition plan that is sustainable over time for you and will allow you to follow through with your fat loss or body composition goals. And lastly, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Skillshare for supporting this video. Skillshare is an amazing online learning resource that I direct anyone to who is looking to start their own YouTube channel or is thinking of jumping into the world of social media. They have over 22,000 courses all related to media, cinematography, and photography. And I will typically recommend two courses that I think are perfect for getting started with video editing and Instagram photos. And the first one is learn to edit using Final Cut Pro, which you know is the editing software that I use to edit all of my videos. And the second is Mobile Photography Basics for Instagram success. And this is for those who want to post amazing pictures just using your cell phone. And premium memberships start around $10 a month. However, Skillshare is kindly offering the first 300 people who click the first link in the description box to get two free months of unlimited access to all 22,000 courses. And these spots typically go pretty fast, so if you're interested, check the link down below. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you missed my last women's series video on whether or not birth control is making you fat, it will be right here for you. And if you haven't subscribed, you can click the icon right here, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.